Don't bring your crap. Don't bring your hair dryer, your toaster oven, your electric heater that you think you wanna use. Don't bring that stuff because as soon as you plug it into the wall, pop, and you're done. I'm telling you from experience, trust me. Bird whisperer. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hey. Yo, what is up, Soul Fam? This is Chris with Soldier of Life, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you are new here, I am an American living in Germany, and I talk about German stuff on Wednesdays, and a vlog on other days, and then I do other stuff on other days, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff going on. But in today's video, the weirdest thing that I actually didn't think about, my journey into actually living in Germany as a permanent resident or whatever was a long one and a grueling process, and I never told anybody about like the details, like the essentials, what you need to know. So in this video, we are breaking down that. Now I think I have about 10 of them. It's about 10, maybe, let me check. It's 10 on the dot and I didn't even know. Real talk, I didn't even do that on my, I didn't even do it on purpose. Wow, well, we're just gonna run off the list. So number one is housing. Now housing is a grueling long process. It is very hard to find housing in a lot of different cities in Germany. Now this is because they have this long period. I know I seen this article the other day about how students can't find housing so they're all living with each other and living with other people and I couldn't tell you. I never had to go through that. I was fortunate enough to be able to find housing but I myself I couldn't tell you. I know a lot of times when they do housing they have like interviews and see what type of person you are and in the states they go through that also but I mean depending on where you're coming from I know when I was living in Thailand it took me like 20 minutes to get an apartment and like really like it literally took me 20 minutes so I think that somebody coming from America they would probably be used to it a little bit but I know it's a lot more arduous of a process here than it is in the States so it depending on where you come from I don't know but make sure you get your housing like early because it it's a long wait like they have three month four month waiting lines for people trying to live in certain apartments in Germany number two is the currency conversion Germany in my eyes is expensive it's one of the richest in Europe and probably because they be taking all the money no seriously currency conversion when you're going to the bank and if you have like an American card or some foreign national bank card or something they are going to tax your ass at the Geldomat Geld, Geld Automat. I just call it Sparkasse. Like the first two years I was here, I just called every ATM machine a Sparkasse. I don't know, the words flow. That's not what the ATM is called. That's a bank. But the Gelt, the Gelt, <laughs> the Gelt Ultimate. Gelt Auto, yeah, whatever. I think me for my bank, I currently have a bank where I use my card from Australia and I think they hit me with like eight euro every time I take money out. So make sure you're getting your money and finance situation assembled. There's a lot of different options that you can use. I personally use one online called TransferWise so I can transfer money in different areas and different accounts. And then I can use that type of money to get cash out. It's a process, if you wanna know about it, hit me up. Number three is tough. Oh my God, I can't talk about this enough. If you don't know what TUF is, TUF is the certification of your vehicle saying that it is safe enough to drive in Germany. One of the best things about being in the military and being stationed in Germany is that you're able to bring your vehicle from the States to Germany, but it has to pass TUF. And no lie, in the States, I had an enormous election of cars and I really wanted to pick one that I can bring to Germany and it would be awesome to drive here but I knew that this car would not pass TUF. I know there was no way I would be able to get it certified knowing that many of the parts would not be in Germany they would only be in the States and I wouldn't be able to fix it so I had to get rid of the whole car and that I've seen so many times in Germany there will be cars that are perfectly good they're fine they run and drive but they don't pass the TUF and there are certain things that you have to fix that might cost you more than the car is worth 
you just get rid of the whole car and it's crazy how many cars are at the junkyard in Germany that can drive right off the lot but they can't pass TÜV so they're really worthless to everybody make sure that you give your tush straight if you're going to buy a vehicle. I've already made this mistake. Talk to you about that later. I got frustrated trying to uh, salvage the windshield. Try to cut it over here, but it's all I missed. So, what I'm gonna do is do a little replacement. Mm. Replacing the window. <laughs> Number four is 220 volts. It's for Americans. Obviously, if you come over to Germany, don't bring your crap. Don't bring your hair dryer, your toaster oven, your electric heater that you think you want to use. Don't bring that stuff because as soon as you plug it into the wall, pop, and you're done. I'm telling you from experience, trust me. I used to have a big music sound speaker system from the States, and when I brought it to Germany, as soon as I plug my power source for my subwoofer into the cord, first time in Germany, and never again. As soon as I plug it in, it was done so. So don't bring that crap over here. Make sure you buy most of your stuff, 220 volts if you know to think about it, or dual voltage in the States and then bring it. But don't bring that stuff over here, just buy it over here. It's a little bit more expensive. Which gets me to my fifth point is Germany, in my opinion, is more expensive than the States, if that's what you're comparing to. Now, like I said before, it is kind of an expensive country. Now, I know a lot of people might defer from that. It depends on your lifestyle to me but a lot of things that I've seen in Germany and different parts of the world is that Germany really doesn't have like a middle ground or a lower ground that much. It's more like this is what it is, this is the same. If you wanna buy some type of electronics. In America, there are like 20 different suppliers that are all fighting for your attention. If I wanted to buy a TV today in America, I can go to Best Buy, I can go to Walmart, Circus City's clothes, sorry guys. I can go to Target. I can probably even go to like the dollar store. The dollar store be lit nowadays. They be getting some good stuff in there. Dude, what? This is a dollar? A dollar? A collar? For a dollar? But what I'm trying to say, there are like 20 different stores that you can buy that one item that you want. And the good thing about this is, is when you have competition, that's when the prices become the most competitive. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the reason that you can get goods in America cheaper than Germany is because there's so many competitors. In Germany, if you want electronics, you gotta go to the electronics store. Whoa. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, if you want a certain item, you have to go to where that item is bought. I remember one time I just needed deodorant, and there's a Netto across the street. Guess what? The Netto didn't have deodorant. Now I have to go find a Teddy, or I have to go to Coughlin, or some big huge store, or find a DM, which is like a pharmacy store, to buy deodorant. I just don't want to walk around smelling like buttholes after I got out the shower. I just want some deodorant, son. You know how sometimes when you think about yourself, how different you were back in the day. I know just recently I just got rid of so many clothing items because that just wasn't my style anymore. And I end up buying this hat because it had pink in it. Like really, how cool do I look right now? I think I'm just gonna finish the whole video with this. Ah. Hope you can see me. What is up, Soul Fam? So, uh, this video was long as hell, and the weather is kind of crap, so I couldn't get my vloggy vlog on today. So, I'm gonna finish this up on part two. Make sure you check it out next week. If you made it this far in the video, I definitely appreciate it. Make sure you hit the subby somewhere, and uh, I love you guys. See you in the next video. Love you guys. Now, uh, beat it. <laughs>